Hi there, my name is Dave and today we're going to try yet another Rioja, this time a 2017 Baronia Rioja Reserva, which is on sale right now for just $23 at BC Liquor Store. So I covered a lot about Rioja and Spain and the different grapes last time, so today I'm just going to focus on the actual winery and how they made the wine. So this was made at Bodegas Baronia and this winery was started in 1973. And they have two wineries. Their flagship winery is in Rioja and the other one makes uh, Verdejo in Rueda, which is another region of Spain. Uh, the winery promotes sustainable agriculture and the name comes from the ancient Celts of that area who were called Baronis. In the Rioja, there are three regions. There's Rioja Alta, Rioja Baja, or now it's been called Rioja Oriental, and Rioja Alavesa. And this winery, as you can see on the map, firmly ensconced in the Rioja Alta. And the Rioja Alta is known for old world styles of wine because it is higher elevation, shorter growing season, and brighter fruit flavors, and lighter wine. So that's what the Alta, Rioja Alta region is known for. This particular wine, the vineyard has Atlantic influences, cold winters, mild summers, and moderate rainfall. So it's not super hot and super dry, it's more moderate uh, temperatures. The soils are clay mixed with some iron or lime and alluvial. The vineyard is quite large. It's 900 hectares and is at around 700 meters elevation. And the vines are between 20 and 100 years old. They grow Tempranillo, Graciano, Mazuelo, also known as Carignan, Garnacha, also known as Grenache, and Viera, which is a white wine grape. The winery, as you can see from this photo, has a grass roof, so it's all fitting in with that environmental, sustainable type idea. The winery, in fact, has a sustainable design to it using geothermal energy, it uses rainwater, less energy consumption, and minimal impact on the environment. In fact, it is a LEED, L-E-E-D, certified winery. And I know that LEED is a very important environmental um, certification. The building I live in in Kelowna is a LEED certified building, which has geothermal energy, actually. This wine is part of their classic line, and they also have an exclusive line and a rare line, but I have never seen those um, around here. The grapes for this wine were grown from vines that are more than 40 years old. The weather during 2017, because this is a 2017 vintage, had a bit of a rocky start to it, but turned out well, and in fact, turned out to have excellent wine with low yields. This Baronia has 95% Tempranillo, 4% Graciano, and just 1% Masuelo or Carignan. Pairing according to the website is roast meat, charcuterie meat, like Iberico ham, and ripe cheese. So I've got some nice ripe cheese and crackers to go with my tasting today. It was aged 18 months in French and American oak and 18 months in the bottle. So it was released in 2020 and that's why it has the Reserva designation because of the time in the bottle and the total time was three years. It, as I said, it's $23 at the BCL. There's also a Grand Reserva that is available in BC at Everything Wine. Now, Grand Reserva has longer time in oak and longer time in the bottle. A total of five years, I believe. And it's $42 at Everything Wine. And there's also a Tempranillo single varietal at Everything Wine for $23, both made by Baronia. This is the only one that you can get at the BC liquor store. So, let's try this one after last week's Roja, which was okay, it was a good wine. I'm, I have high hopes for this Veronia Rioja 
Reserva. But let's try it out. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, nice smell. Compared to last week, it's it's a diff I mean it's the same same grapes, same area, but definitely different sort of smell. Um, anyways, I said appearance. I said clear, deep ruby. I agreed with you. I couldn't find. The, I couldn't see the stem looking through the wine. Um, nose. I said clean, medium plus intensity. A little bit of red fruit like raspberry and cherry, but a lot of blue, uh, dark fruit like black, black currant and blackberry. Um, a little bit of green pepper. I didn't detect any cinnamon, but I did detect chocolate, vanilla, maybe some cloves. I got some smoke, some sort of smoked um, smell to it. Not super strong like uh, tobacco or cedar, but sort of a smoked, toasty smell. Um, some generally general cooked black fruit. Um, maybe a little bit of leather and a little earthiness there, but but not a lot of really agey stuff. Dying to try this to see how it, how it uh, measures up. Oh, it's got something in it, yeah. <laughs> I said uh, dry, um, medium or medium plus acidity, medium tannins, uh, high alcohol. So 14%, so it is high. Um, I said medium body, um, medium plus intensity of flavor. Like, I thought the flavor was great. And a medium plus finish, a nice long finish. Blackberry, black fruits, blackberry, black currant, black cherry, a little bit of black pepper. Um, before I said, uh, you know, I didn't taste any cedar uh, or cedar tobacco. I tasted both cedar and tobacco. Like they weren't on the nose, but they're on the palate for me. Um, some smoke. Uh, that mushroom was there again, so, and some cooked fruits. Um, I thought it was a very food-friendly wine that's ready to drink now. Um, I wouldn't bother aging anymore. I think it's ready to go. I thought it was balanced. I thought it had a really good length. I really like the intensity of flavor. And I think it's complex too. I think there's a lot still going on in this wine. Um, I rated it between very good and outstanding. If you are looking into booking a wine tour of the Okanagan next year, and you are interested in a customizable, flexible, and completely private wine tour in the comfort of your own vehicle, please check out the link below in the comments.